I'm Jeff Stein. I'm a co-president of the Kosanti Foundation. Our Kosanti is meant to be a demonstration project of the idea of arcology, architecture and ecology as two parts of a single entity, which, by the way, with eight billion of us on the planet living in buildings, architecture and ecology are two parts of a single entity, although the architecture part is pretty much a drag on the living ecology part. In the 1960s, Paolo Soleri had a kind of an aha moment about cities. First of all, they're sort of the container for human social evolution. And second of all, if they're only a few stories thick, spreading out for hundreds of square miles, as Phoenix does, 900 square miles of uh, pretty much single-story houses, it isn't going to be very sustainable. In most American cities, 50 to 60 percent of the land mass is covered by roads and streets and parking lots and alleys, things that we hope will connect us through our use of machines, but in reality separate us in space. Our idea here at Arcosani is to demonstrate how a town could be organized three-dimensionally, compact, complex, not spreading out for uh, hundreds of acres or even hundreds of square miles, but contained so that we might figure out how eight billion of us humans are going to share the planet and how we're going to share it with the hundreds of millions of other species with whom we've co-evolved. So Arcosanti is trying to demonstrate another way of inhabiting the planet. Hi, my name is Shannon and welcome to Arcosanti, an urban laboratory in the high desert of Arizona about 60 miles north of Phoenix. We are headed into the Crafts 3 building. One floor up from where we are now is the visitor center and one floor below us is the cafe at Arcosanti. We are here in the Arcosanti visitor center. Out of the visitor center we sell the famous Solari wind bells uh, in bronze and in ceramic. This is the cafe at Arcosanti. It is the open mezzanine in the middle of the Crafts 3 building. We offer three meals a day open to the public. We are at the bottom of the Crafts 3 building, the building with the cafe and the visitor center. A lot of the architecture here at Arcosanti is focused on the idea of mixed use space. So the Crafts 3 building has the commercial bell production sales and the visitor center at the very top. The cafe is the second craft. And then at the very bottom of this building in the last two stories, we have residential spaces. So the building has a use 24 hours a day. We have a couple of different kinds of living spaces that you can get into when you become a resident here at Arcosanti. Something that's very common is a co-housing unit. A co-housing unit will have four or five different bedrooms, uh, to one or two different living room spaces, a kitchen and a bathroom shared by all of the people that live in that space. Here we have our visitor's trail. Our visitor's trail takes you all the way to the far mesa and gives you a full iconic skyline of Arcosanti. We own 860 acres. We also lease an additional 3,200 acres from the state of Arizona, bringing our total preserve to about 4,000 acres. Here we are at the Arcosanti Bronze Foundry. We have a foundry here at Arcosanti. We also have one at our sister location in Scottsdale, Arizona, Cosanti. The bell making process starts with what's underneath that tart called foundry sand. We start with a two part mold. The sand is packed into both halves around the steel and aluminum form, which provides the bell shape and then they put it into a compressor which compresses the sand with about 150 pounds of pressure and at that point they can remove the steel and aluminum form from the center so that there's just empty space between the two halves of sand. They pour the bronze about three times a day during the week. We invite visitors to come and watch the artisans pour the molten bronze. We heat up the bronze in a furnace uh, inside of a crucible somewhere around 2,200 degrees Fahrenheit. They'll pour in the morning and around 1 p.m. in the afternoon they come and they break out the molds and the bells from there get finished. The bronze foundry is inside of the app structure behind me. 
Uh, the structure has studio spaces on the first floor, and then on the second floor there are windows into the residential spaces built uh, behind and above the workspaces down here. We have a furnace where we heat the bronze in, and then above the furnace there's a hood. Inside of that hood there's a canal that's opened in the winter that funnels the excess heat from the furnace into the flooring of the two apartments above it. We have two apps structures here on site. APSE is a technical term for a quarter of a sphere, very similar to the Hatch Shell Theater in Boston. Behind me is the ceramic studio where we make the ceramic wind bells, which is a silt casting process. Our clay comes to us in a very dry and rocky form, and we break it down and process it into liquid clay, or slip. We use it in plaster molds, like this two-part mold, and in silt beds, like the one here. Almost every single structure that you'll see today has a residential space built into it. Uh, the ceramic apps, there was somebody living in it for the first three years. It was built in 1973. It's not very safe to live in a ceramic studio though, so it's one of our only structures that doesn't have residential space. However, we do have a small wooden stage that we put on top of the workspace here, so we're able to use this space as an amphitheater for different events that we have throughout the year. Beautiful. We are in the Kali Soleri Gardens, a garden space that's dedicated to Paolo Soleri's wife, Kali. We have this idea that you're able to have a lawn that is big and luscious and green, but at Arcosanti, everybody doesn't need their own lawn. We share one. And we also water the lawn and keep grass here in the high desert of Arizona by recycling our water with a gray water system that takes water from sinks and showers in our residential areas in the East Crescent and puts it back into the landscape. Here we are in the vaults or the vaulted archers. The structure I'm standing under right now was the very first completed structure here. Started in 1970 and finished in 1972 and it was primarily first used as shaded workspace. Our entire site is south facing to take advantage of the direction of the sun throughout the year. Most of our structures are made out of concrete. So as the sun passes very low in the southern sky in the winter, heating the concrete and heating the space as much as 15 degrees. Alternatively, when the sun passes very high in the sky in the summertime, our arches here and the app structures are able to cast shade over the work areas beneath, making it a more habitable space throughout the year. This line is uh, the line that marks the least amount of sun that makes it into this space during the summertime. The line back here, which marks the most amount of sun that gets in on the winter solstice. Back here we have the lab building, which is our indoor workspace. Out of the lab building, we have our maintenance department, our electrical, and our plumbing. We also have a full wood shop in here with tools and a metal shop where you can weld to build anything that we're working on in construction. Our residents also have the ability to use all of the equipment in their free time. The second story here has open spaces that residents can apply for to use as personal storage or artist studio spaces. We also have a community sewing studio, a screen printing studio, and a second ceramic studio that has potter's wheels that residents and visitors are able to utilize. This is our amphitheater. It is our largest performance space that we have. It can fit up to 500 people. And it's nestled within the larger structure around us, which is the East Crescent. And the East Crescent is intended to be a very prime example of mixed-use space, uh, working in residential space. In this half of the Crescent, we have on the second story, three co-housing units, four or five bedrooms, one or two bathrooms, one or two living rooms, and a kitchen space shared by all those people. On the very top floor, we have more private residential spaces, more like studio apartments or larger apartments where families will live. So out here you can see our pool, which has an Olympic length lane and also is one of the most important parts of uh, summer life here in the high desert of Arizona. Beyond the pool, you can see a little pond back there. That is our oxidation pond, our black water system, where we treat our waste with two different kinds of bacteria, one aerobic and one anaerobic. And then beyond the pond, in the trees down there, you can see a series of structures. When the original workshoppers came to build the site here in the 70s, they needed a place to set up 
a living area and they didn't want to do it up here on the side of a mesa where they were setting off dynamite on a regular basis. So they went down there right next to the Agua Fria River and they set up what was originally referred to as the plywood city. <laughs> Slowly the plywood structures were replaced by more durable concrete cubes, eight foot by eight foot, which are still used as residential spaces today. I live down there and I love it. We have the majority of our greenhouses down there. So this is actually one of the archival designs, designed for an arcology in a very, very cold climate. I believe it's designed for somewhere in Siberia. And it's an example of the concept of an energy apron, which is this entire hillside of a, a greenhouse and it's tiered. So the tiers on the lowest end of the greenhouse would have a much cooler climate than the top tiers, which would allow you a much more diverse range of agriculture that you could build. And it also would allow for the heat rising in the greenhouse to be used as a way to heat the structures where you would have the commercial and residential and recreational spaces. In 1970, there was just this open mesa and an idea. Our focus here has been to demonstrate what can happen when a group of people get together surrounding an idea and, uh, and try to make it happen. I guess the real advice is to figure out how to be really neighborly with your neighbors. That's really the next step for all of us, really, to figure out how to be better neighbors to each other. We've lost a sense of community that, in fact, even in America, we once did have. And so the work is to regain that sense of community. The spatial awareness of how that can work in a neighborhood is probably the first step. So go at it, brothers and sisters, <laughs> really. If you enjoyed this week's episode, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Thanks for watching, and thank you to the patrons that support the channel. If you're interested in becoming a patron, click the link down below. And I hope you guys have a great week. Get out there and go do something that makes your life better. Peace.